what advice would you guys have for other filmmakers who might be setting out on a, a similar journey to what you've been on? I think, I, I mean, at least for me, I find that it's instinctual and, and a curiosity, a natural curiosity about a subject, whatever it is, whether it's personal or a friend of yours, and, and just find out whatever that thing that just that makes you kind of tick, you know, and it doesn't have to be some commercial thing. It could be, it could be anything. It could be a sad story or, or something that's really funny and just finding that really simple thing that just, you know, basically keeps you up at night and keeps you excited. I, you know, I was very close to my family. So for me, it was talking to my grandmother and my father about our family history. And it was just so much richness in my own household and so much craziness, you know, I'm half Puerto Rican, I'm half African American, and we just have tons of stories. And I think just for young filmmakers is tap into what you know and write what you know and, and just follow that, that natural curiosity. And then, you know, work with other people that are actually smarter than you. I mean, I find that, you know, I have an older brother and I consult with him all the time about the stuff that I just don't know. And there's so much stuff that I don't know. And every time that I do something, I'm like, I realize how much I didn't know when I made that film, even if it, somebody else liked it, you know. So I think it's really just working with people that, that can answer all the questions that you can't. Um, and that, I found that to be very helpful for me. For me, I mean, it's like a cliche advice in some ways, and it's po pointless too, but it's, tr it's very true, I think, which is like just don't stop making movies if you really want to make movies. But I also think that people who make movies don't really have a choice. Like, I don't have a choice. I'm, I have no choice. I'm going to do this because I, I don't like doing anything else besides like watching basketball and hanging out with a couple cats. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, that's, like, otherwise I just get bored. So I have no choice. And I feel like that's probably the case with mm -hmm. everybody here. It's like, you're not gonna stop because you'd be miserable if you didn't, you know? Be prepared for work. It's work. Mm -hmm. It's work, you know, in a sense of work, okay, work, nine to five job. It's, it's a lot of effort. You give your heart and soul into it mm -hmm. and, and uh, and be prepared to, you know, roll up your sleeves and warm up your chair and, mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, sweat a little bit. I, I think also learn to manage expectations, which I think is something that you have to do throughout. I don't think that's advice for young filmmakers. I think that's, that's, think that's advice for everyone. Mm -hmm. I think I applied to Sundance maybe with four or five shorts. I mean, this is like my fifth short. I think that I applied with and finally got in. And I, I played, you know, some of the top festivals in the world, but I've received incredible amount of rejections on the way to get there from C, D, you know, B festival. It, it didn't matter. I've just lots of way more rejections than actual acceptances. And I think just to managing expectations, you're absolutely right. It's that, you know, you're going to be rejected, but just don't allow that to sort of blockade you or, or just stop you from, from, you know, doing what you also, if I, if I may add, uh, there's not one type of filmmaking and like if somebody rejects you, it doesn't mean anything. It's it, in a sense, it, it, we are doing it because we, we kind of, we can't not do it. There is something that it's that, you know, kind of uh, annihilates everything else. And for that reason only, if just keep on kind of keep on making stuff and creating work and, uh, you know, kind of a hard work is never going to not, not pay off. And I, I don't think you know it would be it would be insane if we only had like films that go to Sundance and we don't have anything else oh, yeah. it would it's yeah. kind of a, that kind of validation is is not is not a reason oh so I'm not I didn't get in Sundance for five yeah. years so I'm not gonna do, do it anymore it doesn't mean that I'm that I'm good. just absolutely that's why we have all sorts of filmmakers it, oh my god it would be horrible if you know it was just only one of us or yeah. one of one you know Ten chosen people were making films that's ridiculous to go back to my own personal experience no been oh, the journey to get from where I was to here. Um, I was probably obsessed with films like from when I was 14, 15, 16, and yet I didn't actually make one until I was 26, um, which looking back is ridiculous. Uh, and so for anyone out there, regardless of where they're at, the first thing is you're never gonna know unless you try. And then basically when you make that first attempt, it most probably will be shit. It will, but you'll try it again, and you'll try it again. And I, to be honest, I would tell people not to worry about actually being distinctive or trying to find a voice immediately. I think that you should try everything yeah. uh, and just see actually what you fall into. I think it's too limiting to say, I'm going to be this kind of filmmaker at the very start. I think you should basically try everything because as you're trying, you're developing your craft. Mm -hmm. And then basically when you realize the kind of films you want to make and the kind of people you want to connect with, you'll have a platform of filmmaking experience to go and really express yourself. So you'll not only have an idea, but you can actually deliver that idea. Yeah. I, I, uh, 
I had two careers before starting. I was a, I was a teacher, and then I worked on, on Wall Street as a director. And in all of those jobs, I sort of, you know, I was doing the same thing. I kind of found myself being the video guy. It, somehow I kind of managed to use the videos as a medium. So like, and I have a lot of friends that are co- kind of stuck in their day jobs and hate their jobs and can't imagine leaving them. And, and I, I think I found my voice some, in there, not knowing that I actually wanted to be a filmmaker. I wasn't that guy that I woke up, you know, that knew from the time he was a young yeah, boy. That, that just didn't happen I'm for me. sick of that story. You know, Steven Spielberg was 12 making films on Super 8. It's like, all right, okay, that's him. That's He's in the top one percentile of directors who get to make things annually and do whatever they want. That's not what you should be shooting for. It's like just to actually be paid. Life, life to do experience, you care I think, about. is, yeah, get, get a job, travel. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, and I've, I've heard this before, and I think it's absolutely, do something else other than filmmaking, you know, like go, you know, break up, break, have your heart yeah, be yeah, broken. Yeah. I mean, all of these things that, you know, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese when I was 16, and like, <laughs> you know, I danced as a rat, and I was a cook, and I was a, you know, a baseball coach, and I, I did a lot of different things in my life that I think kind of added up to, to making movies. It's like I needed to have content before I could yeah, actually yeah. make it. Well, that, that's more like it because that's why the website is called No Film School. So I can, I can actually I can piggyback off of that. You know, it's like you can go to film school, but have, have something to say and have a life. And, you know, uh, it's, your voice is more important than your craft. Mm-hmm. You also work on this be derivative. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're making movies about other movies. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the, the, the single thing that you have is your point of view. And the only way you really understand that is with experience. And to, okay, we could all, okay, if someone said, let's make a film about Katrina, we would all make different films because we'd all identify with a different aspect. And that's your unique thing. That's what will hopefully carry through in every single thing you do. Um, but finding that isn't easy and it will take you time and just uh, be easy on yourself. Yeah, it's like, it's not about making the first perfect film. It's, it's about making a film that has something that it's edgy, that has, you know, that has has something, something yours. It's not like by kind of a making a, you know, a, a super successful, selling it out there and now you're kind of shooting off to the, it's about making something that is, is you, that tastes of something. That no one else could. Exactly. And then if, you know, if it's not, you know, the most amazing, so what? You know, like you go again, you try you again, again, you go again, you try again, you see your mistakes, you, you know, don't see your mistakes, you repeat your mistakes and then you don't repeat them again. And you say something, it's like, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, going to, back to what you said before um, about, okay, so I asked my older brother when I don't know, um, but by going through the experience of shooting that film, you then know. It's like, ah, oh, okay. And then you put that experience into your next project, into your next film, and there'll be something else you don't know then, but for the next one, the next one, you're constantly building all this information and that, you know, it keeps us going, fuels the fire.